All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, brothers and sisters all over the world. The name of this channel is The African Times, and I'm Thomas. All right, everybody, we, we, we have to talk about the draft, the U.S. draft, the collection and gathering of young boys, young men for the purposes of defense. That's what they tell us, the purpose of defense. Uh, the gathering of these young men, young boys, to become soldiers. Soldiers for the defense of the country. And oftentimes when you become a soldier, that means that you defend and you may have to take lives of other people. And in the process of taking lives of other pre people, you may lose your life. Well, as you all know, it has been reported and talked about lately that the U.S. government... Uh, is considering uh, selective service, meaning a draft. Uh, now, we got to get some facts, and we're going to give you a few of the facts now so that you understand. Uh, so we're going to jump right in, okay? This is a channel that dedicates itself to giving us information to help us understand how the world events affect us, you, me, people that look like you and me, the boys and girls. Uh, in our lives, our prosperity, our children, our grandchildren, and everybody else. So again, let's jump right in. The draft, it can be a little bit, a little bit misleading what you're hearing. Uh, the automatic registration of young boys, I believe they're reporting ages 18 to 26, to be available for selective service, to be available for military service in the event that there's some emergency. Well, that's actually not the creation right now with this legislation of the draft. It's not new. Uh, when I was a kid, we had to register. You had to fill out a little card when you turned 18. What it sounds like, and the legislation isn't, isn't totally, totally, like this hasn't been rolled out and, and it's in, in, I believe, to be debated and left in the Congress. The point is that the selective service is automatic. In other words, they're just going to list you. You don't have to do it. It doesn't sound like they're saying they're drafting you right now. They're not really doing that. They're just saying that, again, when you turn 18, instead of reporting someplace to register, you just sign I mean, they're going to automatically know who you are. They have it in the database, and they'll go ahead and register it for you. I think the only new thing that they're adding here is that they're adding those girls. Yeah, they want to add the girls. Uh, there's some some information in in uh, this this legislative document that the same thing that they're doing for the guys where they automatically register them, they're going to automatically register the girls. That's new. They haven't been doing that. But this is not unusual if you consider the fact that all of your Hollywood propaganda, I'm sorry, all of your Hollywood movies are, you know, featuring women uh, in combat. <laughs> Remember? And women are doing very, very aggressive things to the men. I mean, the women, most of the men in the movie, they can, they, they take on three, four, five men and they're able to, to, you know, handle that situation, de destroy the men, you know. So this is something that they've been promoting for a while to get the people ready. And usually before they go to war, one of the things that they do is they prep the population. They prep the population and they prep the population with movies that depict heroism on the battlefield. So that now they have in the minds of some of our women <clears throat> that uh, you can take on and you can do everything that a man can do and you can fight a man and beat a man. Now, okay, that's what you want to do? Fine. That's, that's what you want to put in the minds of the women and make them believe that they can, you know, fight three, four, five men? Uh, okay. Uh, there are other ways to do it, but, you know. I hope our women are safe. So, again, the draft is not its not something new. They just, they've been doing it. But there's some interesting statistics that you need to know about. And this is what I'm going to tell you. Uh, so let's take a look at these. I'm going to try to put the, <clears throat> put the information up. Just a simple Google search. 
All right, so let's get to these facts. In 1967, in America, 29% of our African boys and young men, 29% of that African American, if that's what you want to call them, but 29% of our African boys were eligible for the draft. Well, at that same time, compared to white boys eligible for the draft, it was like 63% of white boys were eligible for the draft at the same time. So let's get that straight. 29% eligible black boys, African boys, 29% white boys, I mean 63% white boys eligible, okay? Well, when the draft started, and they started drafting, this is for the Vietnam War, when they started drafting, of that 29% of black boys that were eligible, they drafted 61% of them. So that's more than half. That's almost like of the available black boys eligible, they drafted two-thirds. Two-thirds of them. Well, of the 63% of the white boys who were available for the draft, they drafted like 31% so <clears throat> what they drafted basically the numbers were around there I don't remember exactly but but let me just give you the, what they really did so for every white boy that they drafted young young white boy white man young young man they drafted two of our African boys two of them <clears throat> They drafted two of them. Again, understand that. To send the war, to send the war, to defend the country that just during that exact same time was denying these, these young boys and these, these people access to the same water, to the same bathroom, discrimination, segregation, unemployment. These people that they were sending, were, they would send two black boys for every one white boy. That's how they distributed their random draft. Do you think that was random? Okay, let's look at another fact. All right, all right. Now, here, here's another interesting fact for you. Just to, since we're talking about facts, we're talking about equality and, and sharing the responsibility because we're all Americans. Well, here's an interesting fact of the, the total number of Africans approximately who served in the Vietnam War are African boys. It was 300,000 of them. 300,000 of them, approximately. And this is on their information. 300,000 approximately. Now, of the population of blacks at that time, or I should say the makeup of African boys in the Vietnam War, that 300,000 comprised about 31% of the force. 31%. That means one-third of all those people fighting over there was young African boys. Remember what I told you, defending doesn't mean just you attacking somebody, it also means you could lose your life. So many of our boys, one third of that whole army over there, combat forces, were African boys who were giving their lives for the same country that when they came back, they could not receive all of the same benefits as all of the people. They tell us we're all equal and man, some great document. Do you remember all of that? Okay, now. Here's the interesting thing. Remember I told you it made 31% of that combat force was our young black African boys. Well, the population of black people, the total population of black people was only 12% of the United States. So why is it that 31% of the fighting force was our boys? 31%. That's one third. One third and we didn't even make up 10% of, I mean, 15% of the population. We didn't even make up a third of the population. We, we, do you understand? That means that one third, that's three times our population, the percentage wise, 12%, roughly 31% was over there fighting those people. So was this America? Was he, And I just told you, they sent for every two white boys, for every one white boy they sent, they sent two of our boys. Do you understand? 
So when you talk about draft, you better understand what they're talking about. They're just not talking about, oh, equality. In a, they're not talking about that. They're not sending. And that's not taking into account. They're not sending their boys. That's not taking into account. The wealth. In other words, what boys were going? Of this 30, it was poor people. They're looking for jobs. They don't have jobs, so they need to job. They want to go into the military. They don't, most of the people going in the military are not going in the military because they want to fight and kill somebody, give up their life. They're going in the military because they need jobs. This is what's happening here. So here's some more information. We just talked about our boys. Now remember, I told you, of this total force, you're talking about 300,000. African black boys. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at the other the other boys who kind of similar to us. They consider them like us. You know, the brown boys, the, the, the Hispanic boys. Let's take a look at that. Hold on. All right. All right. Okay. Look, now we got to add another fact here. See, they're also listing. This is, uh, it looks like from Google, it says that there's a, a, a U.S armed forces website that lists the total number of remember them brown boys them brown boys them brown boys that you know we're all from the same family even we don't know it we 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 don't let these people kind of confuse us but them brown boys right them them hispanics eighty thousand of them on one one listing in google says that they're the the, the army is listing that eighty thousand we're in the Vietnam War. Now that's 300,000, 300,000 of us, 80,000 of them, them Hispanic boys. That's 380,000. But let's look at some more facts. Hold on. All right. All right. Now, one of the Google reports, one of these little Google, you know, links said that 170,000 of Hispanic boys served in the Vietnam War. 170,000. Now, remember, these are just Google reports, and I'm not saying any of them are accurate. That's not the point, because we all know they skewed the numbers to fit whatever they needed to fit, to make it look in a certain way, to make it look a certain way, to make it... And every way that they wanted to look is to look like they're on the side of the right. They're on the side of the good. And then later, years later, oftentimes we find out, well, well we... We apologize, that, but that was that legislation, that was that president, that was that group. But we're now, we're different and we're better. We got to strive for a more perfect you. Do you understand? Okay, hold on, let's get some more facts. Hold on. All right, all right. Now, here, here's an interesting fact. They list of the 2.5 million people, soldiers, whatever, who served in the Vietnam War, 80% of them, 80% of them came from poor families. This is why I was just telling you. What are they doing? People aren't going, people aren't, oh, they, they tell you this bunch of nonsense. The human being, the human person is violent, is, is, a, is a person who's not, you know, they're, they're not good people just by nature. That's not true. No. Now, if they want to say that about their group, their group of people, then okay, if you want to say this group of people by nature is violent and, and harmful to other people, then you say that about you. Most people in the world are living, tra and, and all of you people who are young and be people, who, family people, you know yourself, all you're trying to do is have a good job, take care of your family, have a good life and live. You're not trying to go to war. You're not trying to kill nobody. You're not trying to do that. That's just not true. Most crimes are economic. People are committing crimes because they need money. This is what's going on. So let's take a look at a couple more facts here. All right. All right. Let's 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 get to it. Let's get to some more facts. See, we got to understand what's happening and we got to we can't sit back and not tell the truth about what's happening. You can't do that. What's wrong with you? You 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 know, we men, we're supposed to be protecting our boys and girls. You understand it's a very serious situation. And again, now you're not talking about just men. You're talking about our boys and our girls. Our girls. Come on, man. And listen, you got to understand, just like I told you, it's the poor people, the poor and working class people that descend in, 80 percent of them. These people didn't want to join the military because they want to go fight and kill. They needed money. They wanted jobs. They needed help. Working class, meaning they needed a job. Well, listen, so that you know, in the Vietnam, remember our brown brothers? I just told you about them, our Hispanic brothers. But what about our other brown brothers? The ones over there in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm talking to you. 
the, the ones in Puerto Rico, 48,000 of them. This is what Google is reporting. This is what they're reporting. This is their situation. This is what they're reporting. So it's not me making this up, 48,000. So now you got 300,000 on one site of black people they're reporting, 170,000 on another that they're reporting for our good Hispanic brothers, and then another 48,000 of our Puerto Rican brothers, all black and brown. That number is almost 500,000. So what's the, they said 2.5 2 million, Nine, what, 500,000, five and five? That's 20, what, 25%? No, no, 20%. Five and five is two two point five. So twenty twenty percent twenty percent. Hey man, look, y'all better you better really understand what's what what's happening here. And all these people talking about equality and all that, all of these people were mistreated. They're still mistreated today. This is back in the sixties when it was even worse. It was like almost like an apartheid state. Yet this is the number of people that you were sending over there? Let's look at some more facts. Hold on. All right, all right, okay. This final fact here is, is one that's really kind of simple. What you have here is a group of people, a group of people who are sending people to war using the power that they have, the power that's been given to them by our acquiescence to send people to war, even when the war is not for defense. And an example of this is a perfect example. You sent boys off to war in Iraq, and these boys went on the basis of false information that you knew was false in the beginning, that you placed the narrative in such a way that said, oh, well, you know, remember, remember Colin Powell? Colin Powell. This one little vial has enough damaging power to kill and blah 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 that whole set of lies none of that was true weapons of mass destruction none of that true and as i told you before the thing is well you know we made a mistake yeah well you know but that was then now and let's just forget about it and move on and then what they do is they send you a series of uh, other things to distract you so that you don't think about that anymore and now the past is in the past and now we can go into the future with the next thing fact that's what they do, and there's a history of that. And these people, they're sending boys. They don't, they don't care. It makes no difference to them. And now they're going to send girls. It's not their girls. It's not their family. You know, what, what's the brother? <laughs> You're talking about draft dodging. We got rich people who they, they, don't, they don't send their people. They have to find ways to get out of them. Even one of them, I think he was supposed to be the president. There was some rumor that one of the presidents got, maybe it was Bush, who got, you know, he avoided going because he had the connections, the resources, the money. The fact is, human beings are not naturally violent, naturally uncivilized. That's just simply not true. Anybody would have any kind of common sense left in their mind. You look at the children that are born. You look at them. Watch them. See what they do. Those little kids grow up. They're playing together. They don't care. They not look, look. The little kids don't even care about whether you black, white, blue, brown. They they could care less. They're kids. They just want to play. The socialization process that they go through from the films and the music and the newspapers and the articles and the academic people talking to them and the lecturers and the education system and the governmental system, they change the people. They put in them all of these thoughts about all of these different lifestyles, these different attitudes, these different perceptions of the world, this falsification of consciousness. This is what they do. And it is them because they're in control of it. You don't control it and I don't control it. Look at this picture. You see all these people? These people are what these boardrooms look like. And yes, they're thinking about every part of your life. The government itself deals with every aspect of your life to write rules and regulations and policy. It's just not true that the, the people are wild. No. Let me tell you, here's another fact for you. The people who've been in control of this planet for the last three, four, five hundred years. These great wars and all of these, these wars. Those people. Those people. Those people come from a particular area and they look a certain way. 
Those people are still in control. And those people, it's their history, their facts. They have been the most violent people in the world. So when they talk to you about people are naturally violent, no, they're talking about them. The other people minding their own business and fishing and farming and trying to survive and all of that and having a, trying to have a good life and be free and enjoy the time that they have to spend on and walk this earth. That's who the people are. So just to get back to the draft, we're going to close out. It's not new. They're just now saying, okay, basically we're going to register. And understand something, even that's a bunch of foolishness. They have our social security numbers. They give us all a number. They get they, they know where you are. They're looking at the YouTube. They're looking at the Instagram. They're looking at the X. They're looking at the Twitter. All of the social media, they're just tracking you. They got cameras everywhere looking at you, seeing where you go. So that when they need you, when they want you, they're going to come and get you. This is who these people are. This is what they do. So even the draft registering you, just saying it's automatic. Even if you go and sign up, even if you didn't do any of that, when they're ready because they want to send you to fight, they need you to fight. They need people. They, they send you. Now, the alarming part, the other set of facts, is now you want to bring our girls into this situation. This you're going to do. You're going to put 22-year-old girls in a hell of bullets, in a hell of bombs and tanks and mines. And if that's what you're going to do, and you really got these people believing that, that, that they have the capability, a girl, she has the capability of dealing with a man in a combat situation. Is this, is this, what, you, is this what you're telling us? And telling our girls that they're capable of. Now, some of us, we understand that we have to do that because <laughs> there's a group of people unwilling to give us our freedom. People that look like you and me. I'm talking directly to you. and I'm telling you the facts. And, we, yeah, we, you know, every man, woman, and child has to be prepared to fight for their freedom. It's just the way that it is. But it's not the way that we prefer. I'm a man. I want to see my women and my children. I want to see them safe. My elderly people, I want to see them safe. I want to see them enjoying life. The burden of war and protection falls upon me, falls upon the other men of a society. Okay? All right? So, all right, it, it, it's a problem. Uh, I hope that you guys recognize it, understand uh, that uh, <laughs> the facts are clear. It's not an equal distribution of people. And just... To make sure it's understood, that's a very convenient way to reduce a population of people. It's a very convenient way. You, you, the group in charge, get to choose which people in what proportion of the societal population get to go and die. I fight. Get to go and fight. Okay, so I, I, yeah, look, do me a favor. I need you to subscribe to these videos because I, I'm really, as I told you before, it's a concern to me and it's a concern to many others that there may be mechanisms in place that prevent uh, you from even seeing certain information, me from seeing certain information. So I need you to subscribe to the video, but I also need you to share the video, like the video, do those things uh, if it's true that those things help uh get the video viewership and promotion because these this information that I'm giving you is not really for monetary benefit it'd be nice and certainly need to help but the real reason is that you know that stuff is going to be on YouTube pretty much until they decide to wipe it all if they ever get to that point and they might but as of right now it's on for history for posterity for people to see when I'm not here, I'm no longer here, you're no longer here, our children can get, get factual information that we leave for them to see so that they understand what they're really dealing with. This is an extremely important responsibility and obligation for us as men to carry out. So, like the video, share it so we can kind of see, I can kind of see um, whether or not, uh, I'm just talking to myself. I hope I'm not. But 
this information is so that you get a proper understanding of the world you live in. Then we'll know what steps we need to take as a people. And remember, don't be afraid. This is your good American uh, ideology, the American dream, right? Freedom, liberty. And we are for the people. And when we supposed to, when we have some issues, we supposed to come and confront them and have freedom of speech and talk to our people so that, you know, government of the people, by the people, so that all that can change the way that we want it. And, and, and speaking of that, did any of you, please put it in the, in the comments, did any of you get somebody come to your door, knock on your door? Did, did any of you get a phone call? Did you get an email? Did you get a text message? Did somebody send you something on Skype? Did somebody send you something asking you, do you want your sons and daughters to be drafted? Did they do that? Did they? Well, because it's going around. They're getting ready to vote on it. Now, this is... It's your representative. That's what they tell you. That's what they tell me. That's what we tell us. It's our representative. But the representative must have forgot. He didn't come to me and say, hey, brother, look, um, uh, we're thinking about doing this. Now, you notice even that would be kind of odd because he represents us, right? He represents us. We didn't go to him and say, hey, man, look, I want to talk to you. Uh, there's some things happening on the other side of the world. And uh, I'm concerned about them. So I'm thinking, man, it might be cool. My son, your son, a couple of the other people, we all get together. We get our boys together and we ship them over there. So I want to make sure we can keep up with our boys. We want to know where they are. We want we, So when our boys get 18 and our girls, too, because they need to go over there, too, we need to sign them up. We need to do it just automatically. Did anybody come to you and ask you about that? Did they ask you to vote on that? Cause I'm just a little confused. I don't really understand. I'm, I'm, I don't understand. I'm getting told one set of information, but when I look and I can see, I'm not blind. I can see that that's clearly not what's happening. So, okay, all right, maybe I'm wrong. Y'all put it in the comments, and please, I need you to like, subscribe, share the video. I need you to like the video. I need you to do that. I don't really like even asking you about that, unfortunately. But um, I think it's a reality of this situation. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you got some information uh, and, uh, you know, any any anything you you want me to talk about, you can also put that in a, in a comment um, and then I'll try to address anything that that some people want me to address. If you have some some questions uh, about any of uh, my views or you have some things that you want to ask me about, I don't mind. I don't mind telling them. I'm I'm really, really for the people. And it, contrary to, I know how it comes across is if I'm, I'm only for black people, and I, I am only for black people in the sense that when we talk about the priorities of life, uh, then I have to first take care of me so that I can take care of my family, and then I have to look at my extended family, and then you look at the world, um, and because we're all together. But the problem is, and, and, and I'll do a specific video about this later, the problem is I could have all the love in, the, in, in, in my heart in the world for everybody. If they don't have that love for me, it's, it can be a very dangerous relationship for me. It's just like a pimp who, you know, he got his, his girls. They, they're working for him. He tells them he loves them. Maybe he really does. Like they're bringing them money. <laughs> he might love them. So, but then every now and then he abuses them. Abuses them terribly, physically beats them, and then mm, he tells them he loves them, and he comes with all the things that they need to heal them: the medication, the, the bandages. Then don't work, no, relax, get yourself together, cause I love you. I want you to be healthy. Then she gets back healthy. Then he puts her back out there, and then something else happens. He beats her. Well, that kind of relationship is abusive, and you can't continue in that kind of relationship. You have to separate yourself from the person, even if that person has good intentions. And this is where we find ourselves at the beginning of all these other people who seem to want to publicly say that they're not against brothers and sisters that look like me and you. That we're all together and all of this. And then privately you find out the leaks where they said this. So you look and you see different ones in their society treating black people this way and saying this thing about black people. And we're supposed to all just ignore it and say it's only that individual. Well, that's a part of the entire, entire W plan. You just always say it's that individual. 
it's not a system. No, it's not that. Where the system, the majority of the people are, here's the con contradiction. The majority of the people, see, we're American people. We're good, wholesome people. We believe in fairness and liberty and human rights and all this. Okay, well, you, the contradiction is you just taught us through your academic scholars and all those people that man is wild by nature. Man is uncivilized. Man is... Okay, now which one is, oh, oh, is it your system that's teaching people? Your American system is teaching people? Is that what it is? Well, you've been in the most wars of any other country, in the, I think, in the creation of countries. Every, my entire life you've been at war. My parents' life, the lives of my grandparents. So just too many contradictions, y'all. Hey, look. Got to go. <laughs> Listen, it's good talking to you again. I really, do, really, really do miss all of you. I really do uh, miss you. And, and I'm only saying these things because I love you. I love the people. I love the people. I love you all. So, okay, y'all. Take care of yourself. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru.